Hey there, fantastic viewers. Get ready to dive into a real tech extravaganza today. This is Josh, your navigator for this exciting journey. And guess what? We've got Nico, our Terraform guru, right here with me. We're about to unfold a lesson that's not just your ordinary walk in the park. It's a deep exploration into the realms of Terraform, Kubernetes. That's right, I said it my way. And some seriously groundbreaking methods. So, hold on to your seats because we're about to roll out a video that's a bit more extensive than what we usually do. But let me tell you, every second will be worth it. We're taking you from ground zero, starting with spinning up an Ubuntu VM, and we won't stop until we've deployed a Terraform project smack into our K3S Kubernetes cluster. But hey, what makes this one truly stand out, you might ask? Well, there are not one, but two killer highlights you need to watch for. First, our K3S auto cluster generator, a slick tool we crafted and generously sprinkled over at our GitHub repository. Trust me, it's a game changer when it comes to creating your K3S Kubernetes cluster. And hold on, here comes the mind-bending part two. Buckle up. Our auto cluster generator isn't just your regular cluster spawning magician. No, no. It crafts your cluster with domain names natively chilling in the node list. Wrap your head around that for a moment. So, let's be clear. We're not holding back. This lesson is the full shebang. Installing Helm and Terraform, crafting a Terraform Kubernetes namespace project, and doing it all in a way that's as unique as a unicorn surfing on a rainbow. Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent. However, fear not as he delivers every word in impeccably polished Queen's English. Nico, my friend, you ready to blow their minds? For instructions, go to our blog page. You will find the link below. First, we need to create a Ubuntu VM server. We are going to create the VM in our Proxmox server here. I already have a template. So for me, all I need to do is to clone the template and give it a suitable name. I'm going to make this to a one. We are going to call it Terraform K3S. And we want a full clone. This will take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. We have now created this server here. We need to open the console. And we started it. It's busy coming up for the first time. My user is Nikem. And the password we created the, the template with. Right, now we need to see what the IP address is. So the command is IPA. IPA. And we see that this is 10.154.2.120. We now open another terminal. We can close this. And we now need to SSH to that IP address. Yes. And the password. Now we must run this command. We want to change the IP address of this to make it 10.154.2.93. And I'll explain why 93 later. We are looking to see what the file is that configures our networking. And that's this file here. We need to edit this file. We are going to use sudo because this file is owned by root. So sudo nano and then the path to the file. In our document, we need to look for the second one, the latest or the revised one. So copy this, paste it there, and take the previous code and just comment that out. Keep this because if you make a mistake, you can uncomment this to recover your network settings. Okay, we've done that. Now the device name is different. This is the Ethernet device. Ours is this device. So copy this. Copy. 
copy and paste. Now we can save this, Control S, Control X. And then we need to apply this change. So this is the command, sudo net plan apply. The idea is we want to have a static IP address 93 for this server. And when you've done that, you will now have lost control of this. So we can close the terminal. But we should be able to now run this from here. Open the console. And now we can say IP A. And we should now have the new IP address. There it is. So this is great. We can close this. We need to open a new terminal session to this IP address. SSH nick m 10.154.2.93. After you've done that, I recommend you go to Dino DNS. You can use this link. Go in, create a free account. After you've logged in and created your account, use the static IP address of your server and create a DNS name. This is the DNS name that I've created for my server. We will need this for our Kubernetes installation. So when you've done this, and you've registered your domain name with Dino DNS. So this domain, when you call it, it will open this IP address. We are now going to start with the Kubernetes installation, the K3S Kubernetes. And we're going to install that on this machine here. I need to use Git. So copy this, paste this in here. That was a quick installation. Now we can continue. I want to work in the OPT folder. I'm going to own the OPT folder. So this is the command that you will type with your user login. sudo chan change ownership, the username with a colon, and then the path, OPT. Next, we want to go to the OPT folder as a non-root user. I now can do that. And then in there, I want to run this command. Copy. This is going to download the auto cluster generator, the K3S auto cluster generator from our GitHub repository. It's done that. Let's see what we got. There's a folder. Now we want to go to that folder. So CD K3 tag. Enter. Earlier I asked you to create a FQDN. That's what we were doing. It's called a fully qualified domain name. So that IP address, and here is the fully qualified domain name for that. So we are now going to edit one of the files here. Let us see what files we got. ls-la. Enter. This file here, config YAML. So let's edit this, nano. And you can take this straight out of here. Control K to remove the lines. Paste. Control S 
text to say. Now we want to run the script, this script here. It will use the config YAML file and it will generate all our scripts to create our cluster. So that's dot slash au and then tab. It ran and now let's see what we got ls dash la. And we see we now have a new script here, primary master node shell script. We can actually run this shell script on our server because this is going to be our master node. We need to make these files, the script files, executable. So the command is chmod 775 asterisk or star dot sh. Enter. Ls dash la. See what happened. And you can see the color has changed. These scripts are all executable. We can now run the script. Dot slash and run it. This is now going to install K3S Kubernetes and create the master node. So we can see that if we type the kube control command. Kube control get nodes. And we have our node. Our Kubernetes cluster has now been created. There is an important step we need to do. It's actually telling us here. Th this is what we need to do. It's telling us here. So we need to run this command. I normally create my cluster as the root user, so I will say sudo, sudo cat I need this token because I need to edit the config file and change the token there. And we've already done that earlier. So let's go here. And we place the token and remove the old one. Control K, Control SX. We now need to rerun this script. So it's dot slash auto generate au ls dash la it's now revised our shell script to use the new token so that was our kubernetes installation k3s we will now be installing helm i recommend you go to the opt folder let's create a helm folder there And we'll go there. Copy this command, paste it here. Next, we need to extract this file. Copy this command. Paste it here. Next, we need to move the folder to the user local bin. And now we need to test it. Helm version. And Helm was successfully installed. We will now be doing the Terraform installation. SSH to our server again in the terminal. 
We now need to run these commands because we need to run wget update and also unzip. So And now we want to do an app update. And then we want to install unzip. You will not be able to install unzip unless you did the update. That was the reason why I did that now. Now we can run this command. And let's see what we got. LS dash WA. And we got a zip file downloaded from Terraform. We want to now unzip this file, copy this command. And now we have a Terraform folder here. We want to move that into user local bin. Copy this command. And now we can do Terraform help or Terraform version. I'm going to use the second. That's great. We've now installed Terraform. For this exercise, this is what we need. Open this in a new window. I'm just going to put it to the side here so that I can then tell you what to do. Now you need to click on Browse Providers. Click. And then we need to click on Kubernetes. And if we go to the top right, we should be able to access documentation. Here it is. And we need to copy this to be able to use this provider. This is the code that we are going to use in our main.tf file. Next, we want to create the file name.tf. You can search here for name. And this is what we are looking for. So this is the code that we need to copy. And this is the code that we are going to be using later on when we create our file namespace.tf. Now you know where we got this from. So now we need to create our Terraform project. We are creating the directory Terraform in OPT. And then we are creating the directory k3s inside that. And finally, we are creating a folder called namespace inside that. We need to create the main.tf file.
and in the main.tf file we are going to copy this which we found in our browser there so that's the code let's copy this code Control S, Control X to save it. Now there's two values we need to insert in this. And before we can do that, firstly, we need to see that we have our rancher config. So run this command. That's a good sign. Q exits from less. Then we need to run this Kubernetes command. see what our current context is our current context is default and those two values that we've now verified this value here and this value here that we have verified we now need to add them in so this is new code Then just remove this extra line. Control K. Control S to save. X to exit. You need to be in the folder where the main TF is to be able to initialize Terraform. To work with Terraform and Kubernetes on our server, we recommend you switch user as root. It's sudo su dash. And we are now root. So let us now go back to the Terraform folder. So we're in the namespace project ls dash la and now we want to run terraform init and let's see what happened we have a new file there see that and also dot terraform if we run terraform plan it should not want to install anything new to our cluster right that's a good sign no changes at this point in time we now need to create the namespace tf file And that we had there when we clicked on here. This is the code that we got for the namespace.tf file. But we're only going to put a bit now. We're only going to add this. Control S X to save. And now if we say Terraform plan, we should now get a different response. Now you can see there it's telling us that something is going to be added. There's a create. And here's a resource that's being created. So now we can run Terraform apply.
and it's going to enter a value and we are going to reply with yes. Reply with yes. And it's now created as a resource. We can now go and look at this with the Kubernetes commands. So let's do kube control get namespaces. And we created the namespace called test namespace. There it is. So we've now succeeded to create that. Now we're going to do a change. We can also run tree. And now you can see we've got our main TF, our namespace, and there's a new file here. It's called Terraform TF state. That's our state file. And the state file got generated when we ran apply and successfully created something using Terraform. Created infrastructure as code using Terraform. Let's now edit the namespace.tf file again. And let's add a little bit more to it. This copy. Let's remove the extra line. Control K and save this. Control S saves. Control X exits. And at this point in time, we can run Terraform plan again and we'll see that something is going to happen. It's telling us that changes are going to be made. It's going to remove something and add something. So, re let us now apply this. So, Terraform apply. Value is yes. Let us go back in the Kubernetes cluster and look and see. Get namespaces. We still have test namespace, but now we're going to use a describe. Group control describe namespace test namespace. And we can now see there's some new things it's added. There's the label value. This is what we put into the code here. You see the labeled value. It's picked it up as my value, my label, labeled value. My label, labeled value. So it's picked up the change. And finally, we need to do the cleanup. So let's run Terraform Destroy. What Terraform Destroy will do is it will remove any infrastructure of code it, that Terraform generated will be removed. The infrastructure will be removed and we will also see what happens locally. Value is yes. This may take a while because it's working with Kubernetes. Now if we do kube control get namespaces, our namespace is gone. And with that, I hand you back to Josh. Once our fantastic viewers have had the opportunity to delve into our Terraform extravaganza on YouTube, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you. Your engagement and time are immensely valued by us. Here's a quick rundown of the exciting terrain we navigated together in this lesson. 1. 
We created an Ubuntu VM within our Proxmox VM server, laying the foundation for our journey. 2. Downloaded the K3S underscore auto underscore cluster underscore generator from our GitHub repository, a pivotal step that set the stage for what was to come. 3. Embarked on a journey of creating a K3S Kubernetes cluster in a one-of-a-kind manner, ingeniously incorporating domain names right within the node list, or seamlessly installed Helm in our K3S master node server. 5. Executed the proficient installation of Terraform onto the same K3S master node server, gearing up for powerful infrastructure management. 6. Reached the pinnacle of our lesson by successfully creating and applying a simple Terraform Kubernetes namespace project, elegantly deployed within our K3S Kubernetes cluster. As we wind down this learning expedition, I encourage you to consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed about our latest content, you're joining a community of like-minded tech enthusiasts who share the passion for continuous learning. Your insights are invaluable to us. So please do leave a comment about your experience with this video. Your feedback resonates deeply with us and guides us in shaping content that resonates with you. And for those among you who are eager to take a deeper dive into the world of tech, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. As a Patreon member, you gain the exclusive benefit of free access to our upcoming training courses, neatly packaged in user-friendly PDF format. It's a tremendous opportunity to elevate your tech skills to new heights. Once again, a heartfelt thank you from the entire team. Keep your flame for learning alive, keep exploring, and keep pushing the boundaries within the captivating world of Kubernetes.